Hello, I'm Melody. Welcome to Myanmar Today Review. And this is where we visit the top stories for this week from Myanmar Today. Here are the reports from our reporters from this week. Government to reduce teaching hours at schools. Union minister guides people to follow quarantine steps. Construction sector of Myanmar prioritizing quality. DMH warn of more rain in the coming days. Before we get to the reports, let's take a look at the feature local news from this week. Do Aung San Suu Kyi, state councillor of the Republic of the Union of Myanmar, delivered a video statement at the Global Leaders Day event during the ILO Global Summit on COVID-19 and the World of Work, which was held via video conference on Wednesday. In her statement to the summit, the state councillor, Do Aung San Suu Kyi, highlighted the impacts of the COVID-19 on the vulnerable groups and workers, in particular women. She stressed the need to strike a balance between the twin objectives, protecting the health of workers, and taking measures to ensure that their business can keep running. She apprised a meeting of the Myanmar government's efforts in responding to COVID-19 pandemic and to reduce the impacts of the pandemic on the economy, labor market, and livelihoods. She stated that Myanmar has taken a whole-of-nation approach, mobilizing the strength of its people, strong volunteerism, charity, and sharing spirit. As a result, she stated that Myanmar has to date managed to keep the virus under control. The state councillor concluded by stressing the need for global cooperation that delivers concrete actions in response to the common challenges facing the future of work. Union Minister for Social Welfare Relief and Resettlement, Dr. Wimya A, in his capacity as Secretary of the National Volunteer Steering Unit, held a virtual meeting with the Red Cross Society members, volunteers, and charity workers in Aoveri Region, Northern Shan State, Yango Region, Gaya State, and Kachin State, discussing their experiences and requirements for the fighting against the COVID-19. During the discussion, the union minister said that the country was proud to see that the people participated energetically in carrying out the voluntary works through the COVID-19 period. And as those works were acknowledged, Although he wanted to give the chess badges and certificates of honor individually in person, due to the condition, he could only go and give them to the respective officials in the states and regions. That he wanted the volunteers and philanthropic organizations who participated in the COVID-19 prevention, containment, and treatment processes to discuss their experiences and that it was an advantage by a new way to discuss with all the volunteers from their respective places in a short time. The union minister said that they would support which could be done directly as fast as they could and for the negotiation with the respective departments would also be negotiated. To send the list of the people who had not received yet the certificates of honor, that he will let the responsible officials to go and do field research regarding with the prevention of natural disasters in respective townships. That the discussions and suggestions were very useful, and he urged them to keep cooperating as the COVID-19 period had not been over yet. And I believe it's time now for our first report. As the schools are set to open on the 21st of July, starting from high school, preparation is underway with full acceleration. However, it is reported that the teaching time in the classroom will be reduced where the teachers will make the students engage more in homework than classroom teachings with the aim to keep social distancing priority in schools. So Yerena will tell us the full report on this matter. 
The government has been preparing for the opening of the school from primary to high school in Myanmar amid concern over the infection of COVID-19. But everything is prepared to prevent the infection and the spread of COVID-19 in all school environments. One of the most important aspects of the precaution taken by the government is to keep safe space for social distancing in all schools and take other precautionary measures. In maintaining social distancing, the Ministry of Education instructed all the schools to keep all the students six feet apart, which will make the school find hard to get enough space for the students, as a classroom which usually accommodates around 50 students will now be able to hold only 20 students. Therefore, it is hard to find a better solution to this issue. Speaking to Amai Radio, Dothengi Mon, Deputy Director of Yangon's West District Education Office, and she said, as the school will be open from the 21st of July from the high school, the school enrollment week will start from the 13th of July. And we will do everything to make sure that the enrollment of the school will have no problem at all whatsoever, which is related to COVID-19. And we will see through that all the rules and regulations are applied here. We want to avoid all the problems which we might face during this enrollment week. For the prevention of the infection, we will make sure that the students who can buy vehicles are checked with infrared thermometer before they get off the vehicles and it will be done the same before they get into the vehicles. We have issued the restriction that the school bus cannot keep the students close to each other and it will maintain social distancing. Another huge step the government is taking is the teaching hours at schools will be reduced from 7 down to 5. The teaching in the class will be less and the students will get more homework from the teachers so that the students can get to keep up with the curriculum. Even though the teaching hours in the class will be reduced, it is also learned that the school hours will not be extended and it will end in usual time of the year. However, according to Dr. Gimo, this decision is not permanent yet as the government has not released yet the official announcement on it. Speaking further on this matter, Dr. Gimo also said, in the previous years, we usually had around 45 to 55 students in the classroom. But for now, we cannot do that anymore. A classroom can hold only 20 students, so we need many classrooms. And teachers have to give more time than any other year. Therefore, the Ministry of Education has already prepared for any possible shortage of the school teachers and classrooms. We have a solution where we calculate the ratio of the classrooms and students. If there is sufficient classroom and teacher, that school can go for the first solution, which is called Plan A, which is attending the school regularly. This solution is also called 1 to 20, which is a teacher for 20 schools. Likewise, we have Plan B, which the ratio is 1 to 40, Plan C, 1 for 60 ratio. From Plan B, the students will attend the school alternate three days. Dr. A. Wing is a school teacher from Number 1 Basic Education High School, Babeda, and she also spoke to MI Radio about the change of timetable in teaching hours, and she said, one of the disadvantages we have by reducing teaching hours in the class is as the number of the students have to be readjusted, they will not take long in the school. The teachers will not take a lengthy time in teaching, so the students will get more homework from the teachers. In that way, the students and the teachers will get along with the lessons. But on the other hand, we have advantages of reducing school hours and keeping social distancing, which is the best way to keep the virus at bay and prevent possible infection and the spread of the virus in the school. That's the report on government to reduce teaching hours at schools. 
According to the latest data of the quarantine people at the related centers for July, there are 24,304 people at 6,195 quarantine centers across the country. The Ministry of Health and Sports has been issuing the reminders frequently not to forget the dangers of the disease. As said by the announcement from the Ministry of Health and Sports, people have to follow the health guidelines, avoiding crowded places and anti-COVID-19 measures, and so on. Let's take a look at the details. Union Minister Dr. Wimya E guided the people to follow the quarantine steps to prevent and control the spread of COVID-19 through their Facebook page. He wrote that it is good news about no local transmission in the country, but we still have to be cautious too much about the invisible virus that can be infected with the returnees. Following the guidelines and steps of 21 days quarantine are not very difficult to follow, said the minister through the Facebook page. According to the latest data of the quarantined people at the related centers for July, there are 24,304 people at 6,195 quarantine centers across the country. Unyinyi Region Lodda representative from Dakomyote South Township also told to my radio about the quarantine centers. He said, <laughs> In the previous days, some didn't want to be kept in the quarantine centers. At the quarantine centers, we have fulfilled enough facilities for all the people. Since the infection started, we formed a community organization with the local volunteers in the township and educated the people. In our township, we delivered a bag of rice and masks to each household. People need to know the infection that hasn't finished yet. They have to watch the correct news from the Ministry of Health and Sports and should protect themselves. In the COVID-19 period, the volunteer organization and community organizations are really important in educating the people. Um Yen the president of the Yangon Rescue Organization, spoke to Amai Radio about the current activities in the COVID-19 period. He said, We have to take the returnees to the quarantine centers from the airport. We supported all the needs to them, and if they finish 21 days of the facility quarantine, we will take them to their hometown. We voluntarily tested the other people at their hometowns. With the help of the relevant ward administrators from their hometowns, they have to stay seven-day quarantine. We have seen that some have started to be careless about it. As a volunteer organization, we will help the people about the protection of COVID-19. The Ministry of Health and Sports has been issuing the reminders frequently not to forget the dangers of the disease. State Councilor Do Aung San Suu Kyi also wrote the reminders for the people through her Facebook page that people following the rules to protect themselves from the COVID-19 and they need to nurture good practices to survive in good health. Although they might sometimes feel suffocated for having to live a healthy lifestyle, the long-term value is quite significant. According to the announcement from the Ministry of Health and Sports, people have to follow the health guidelines, avoiding the crowded places, stay away from each other about six feet apart, wearing the surgical or the reusable cloth masks whenever going out, washing hands often for about 20 seconds to prevent the second wave of the COVID-19. According to the data from World Media, the global pandemic has spread to 188 countries, killing over 547,000 people and afflicting over 11 million people around the world. Myanmar is in the 162nd place on the coronavirus infected chart. That's the report on Union Minister Guides People to Follow Quarantine Steps. Now we move on to the third report. The construction sector in Myanmar gets changed as it has prioritized the quality control. For a better constructional concept, Myanmar National Building Code was developed and refined. The role of engineers and architects has enhanced as the clients prefer systematic design development. 
Among the changes happening in Myanmar, the construction sector also brought changes in it, which is prioritizing the quality. Being a developing country, Myanmar is implementing many construction projects, including high-rise buildings and public infrastructure, unlike during the years of 1980s and 1990s. Uamnian, president of Federation of Myanmar Engineering Societies, also explained more about it. <laughs> About 30 years ago, the contractor business boomed in Yangon, especially around Zhangmyang, Damwe, and Sanjiang. Many buildings were built under agreement contract. Some sought for approvals from Yangon City Development Committee, but some didn't. It showed weaknesses in supervising and the maintenance of these buildings. The role of engineers was of less importance at the time. The contractors did not cooperate with the engineers, so that there were many accidents such as structural failures that killed people. Many of the heritage buildings built in Xiangong are old more than one century. Although these buildings were thick, without proper maintenance, they cannot resist to the natural disasters. Moreover, some old houses were built with bad quality material so that recently in Xiangong, some buildings of households collapsed. Then many construction-related institutions were formed, such as Myanmar Construction Entrepreneurs Federation. In addition, the licensed contractors have penetrated into the market. The Federation of Myanmar Engineering Societies was also working for the enhancement of the role of the engineers. Then later of 2000s, the construction setter prioritized the quality for buildings as well as other construction projects. In 2012, Myanmar National Building Code, MNBC, started developing and now it is being refined in accordance with the modern circumstances. Under the leadership of the corporate group of the Ministry of Construction, the Federation of Myanmar Engineering Societies and other relevant organizations, the Myanmar National Building Code was developed in 2012 and it was edited in 2016. It is developed with the references with the current codes and laws in the international arena. It includes all aspects of earthquake resistance and fire safety and many more constructional structures. The new version of 2020 with translation and Myanmar language is to be released soon. Moreover, a law for construction industry inspection which is related to MNBC, is to be launched in the near future. The buildings constructed in accordance with Myanmar National Building Code can resist to maximum of seven reach the scale of ACRI. It is supervised that the constructors and developers follow the descriptions contained in MNBC. In both private and public sectors of construction industry, the quality is prioritized. For any tender projects for building or road construction, the QC procedure is getting developed. Moreover, we can see a better future in the construction sector of our country since it comes to value the engineering subject and architectures. For employees, the technology are shared so that they can learn advanced technology from international community. So the next generation in a construction sector understands well about the design and the concept of the buildings as well as the client's preferred concept developed by the professional engineers or architects. In Myanmar, there are about 7,000 registered engineers trained by Myanmar Engineering Council, 3,700 senior engineers, 1,100 professional engineers, including all types of engineers such as Magnigal, Electrical, and Geotechnical, Myanmar's engineering population counts for over 10,000. And the architects are accounted for about 1,700 in the whole country. For the construction, the developers, contractors, or construction entrepreneurs need to utilize the engineers systematically. The higher the buildings are, the more risky it is for the lives of the public. The engineer's concept, management, and responsibility 
are important for better quality construction projects, which cannot affect the lives of the people. That's all about the changing construction setup of Myanmar. This is Tora Suizen, news reporting from Myanmar International Radio. That's the report on construction sector of Myanmar prioritizing quality. Let's move on to the last report for today. The Department of Meteorology and Hydrology has forecasted more rain in the coming days as the low pressure occurring in Bay of Bungo, which can also cause tropical cyclone. According to some of the people who are working in this sector, Myanmar has suffered more of natural disasters more frequently than ever since 2015, mostly due to deforestation and climate change. Willinson will tell us the full report. Even though Myanmar is located in the monsoon area of Asia, the weather is mostly modified by its geographical location. The cold mass of air from the Central Asia is blocked by the mountains in the northern part of Myanmar and the walls of mountains in the north prevent the cold mass of air from moving forwards to the southern part of Myanmar. This is why the weather in Myanmar mostly depends under the influence of monsoon winds. For Myanmar, most of the precipitation comes from the southern west monsoon, and this is why the west coast is subject to occasional tropical cyclones. The Department of Meteorology and Hydrology has predicted low pressure could occur twice and one minor cyclone in the month of July. Speaking on what could we expect in the month of July, Dr. John Mo U, Director General for the Department of Meteorology and Hydrology, said, Now, what we see is the rain has been pouring out heavily across the coastal areas of Bay of Bengal. Even though it seems initially that the low pressure might get stronger. But in the morning of 8th of July, the low pressure got weakened. So the forecast is the rain will continue to pour out, as this is the time when the monsoon winds usually get strong. We can expect the cyclone through low pressure from minor to major, because the cyclones mostly depend on the monsoon winds. In the last few days, the monsoon winds are getting stronger, but it has come down for now. However, for the past 200 years, there is no cyclone which occurred in Myanmar due to monsoon winds with low pressure. It mostly occurs in Bangladesh and India along the coastal area. The impact Myanmar usually suffers from this low pressure is the rain. Whenever there is low pressure along the coastal areas of Bangladesh and India, Myanmar will receive more rain than usual one. For the months of July and August, the Department of Meteorology and Hydrology predicts that at least four low pressures will occur and two minor cyclones are likely to occur. Even if there is no cyclone when there is low pressure, it can cause a huge wave in the sea. Some of the other natural hazards which we can expect during this monsoon season are landslide, flood, and roadblock due to landslide. For some areas where there are fewer trees, the agricultural land can be eroded with heavy rain in some of the playing areas. One of the reasons this natural hazard has become more dangerous in Myanmar is it is much related to deforestation while the soil is prone to erosion and landslide. Climate change is also another reason which contributes a lot to the natural disaster in Myanmar. Above all, deforestation is the main reason for the cause of these hazards. Utwin Po, who is technical specialist of Myanmar Attractive Industry Transparency Initiatives, and he also spoke to my radio on why the natural disasters has become more widespread these days, and he said, The climate change is the main reason for the widespread occurrence of natural disaster. Since 2015, we have seen rising number of floods across Myanmar along with landslides. Another natural hazard which we usually see in the monsoon season is waterborne diseases related to health issues 
which can be seen only in the monsoon. For example, the area where flood occurs on a yearly basis, the people in that area must prepare for any possible flood. And the awareness program is such an important program that we need to educate the people on what their area can face in this monsoon. Since 2015, flood has become more frequent than the previous year, and this is why the public must be well informed about this issue. The year of 2015 was one of the worst flood hit years for Myanmar, which affect a large part of Myanmar. For the prevention and the natural risk of disaster management, the government has already laid down some policy which is called Myanmar Action Plan on Disaster Risk Reduction and which must be put into action properly. This is Williamson for MI Radio. That's the report on DMH warn of more rain in the coming days. China's door to dialogue remains open to the United States, and it is ready to discuss all issues, the country's top diplomat said as he outlined ways to mend bilateral ties that have soared dramatically in the past months. Speaking at a forum of Chinese and U.S. think tanks, Foreign Minister Wang Yi urged the United States to return to the table, saying both sides have much to offer each other, as he extended help in battling the COVID-19 pandemic. He also called on both countries to come up with three lists, one on bilateral and global issues the two sides can cooperate on, another on differences that can be bridged by dialogue, and a third on hard-to-resolve issues. Wang's extended comments count as the most conciliarity remarks by Beijing since bilateral relations took a dive earlier this year, as the coronavirus outbreak spread around the world. He said China has no interest in replacing the United States. Top U.S. allies on Wednesday denounced the planned pullout of the United States from the World Health Organization, with the Italian health minister calling it wrong, and a political ally of Germany's chancellor warning that the withdrawal could make more room on the world stage for China. The United Nations and the U.S. State Department announced on Tuesday that Washington had submitted formal notification that the U.S. would withdraw from the WHO within a year. The notice made good on President Donald Trump's vow in May to terminate U.S. participation in the WHO over its alleged missteps and kowtowing to China. Underscoring the unprecedented nature of the planned U.S. exit, the WHO doesn't have language in its constitution about how a country could leave. The administration is mostly bound by United States legislation that requires a one-year notice and payment of any arrears in full before departure. Experts said the Trump administration's latest step to self-isolate after pulling out of the Paris Climate Accord, the U.S. human rights body and other international institutions was bound to affect the WHO through the loss of both U.S. money and medical know-how. Critics insist the pullout also will have a negative impact on the United States from losing both a voice and an ear in some of the world's top conversations on health care. WHO officials have declined to comment on the withdrawal, saying they have not directly received formal U.S. notification. The U.S. provides WHO with more than 450 million U.S. dollars per year and currently owes some 200 million U.S. dollars in current and past dues. Italian Health Minister Roberto Sparenza called Trump's pullout decision serious and wrong. Italy was the one-time epicenter of the pandemic in the West and relied heavily on WHO's guidance as it struggled to contain the virus and treat COVID-19 patients. His German counterpart, Hans Spahn, decried a setback for international cooperation on Twitter, writing that more global cooperation, not less, is needed to fight pandemics. 
Recently, the myth that China is somehow complicit in the coronavirus pandemic and may even have engineered the virus has circulated among conspiracy theorists and some media outlets. A range of pundits and some government officials who do not directly accuse China of causing the pandemic have implied as much with the use of military metaphors or by applying labels that suggest intent. Though Chinese officials clearly fumbled at several points in their response to the disease, there is little evidence that they planned a pandemic. Nations and groups do weaponize viruses, but the characteristic of an effective weapon differ markedly from the coronavirus. The most desirable weapons are generally quick, precise, and effective. The coronavirus achieves none of these criteria. As we have already seen, the Chinese population is far from safe from the coronavirus. The virus has run through China, devastating the country's population and economy. That's all with the news and reports on Myanmar Today Review. Tune in every Saturday on MITV at 8.30 p.m. for Myanmar Today Review. Until next time.